Hi everyone, I'm John Wright, the Education Director at MediaWrite Workshops. Welcome. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to reduce the moray effect caused by the interaction of the image and the screen. Today I'm using a PC for this tutorial. When I reference the control key, Mac users should use the command key. For the alt key on the PC, Mac users should use the option key. Also, before we start, I recommend you set the workspace to the Photoshop default, which they call Essentials. You can do this by clicking on Window, then Workspace, then Essentials. I'll show you how to do that. Window, Workspace, and Essentials. Okay, and your panels on the right should line up in a similar fashion the way mine are. Don't forget, it is a video. You can stop and replay anytime if I'm getting ahead of you. In this tutorial, I'm going to use masking and the Gaussian blur filter to solve our problem. Pretty simple. What is a moray pattern? One definition I recently found said a moray pattern is a wavy pattern that appears on an image because the detail on the subject matter exceeds the resolution of the camera. Sometimes you see it on TV presenters when they wear fine check ties or suit jackets. That's also true with the wide use of images on websites which are viewed on monitors, not unlike your television. Cameras have a filter in them called the anti-aliasing filter that helps to reduce the moray effect in the original images. The better the camera, the less likely it is that you'll see this effect actually in your image. However, correcting the effect in your original digital image is not what we're addressing here. I am addressing what happens when the image has a moray effect caused by the interaction of the pattern in the clothing with the resolution of the screen the image is being viewed on. The moray effect happens because the detail in the clothing exceeds the resolution of the monitor. Keep in mind that just because the image looks fine on your monitor, it may not appear properly on other monitors at different sizes and different resolutions. The best solution to this problem is to tell your client not to wear clothes that have a lot of fine pattern in them. Unfortunately, this is not always practical. Let me show you what that's, this effect looks like. I did a screen capture of a slideshow I created that this, my client could view online. Here is a screen capture of this lady and you can see a very, very strong moray effect down here on her sleeve as well as up here on her lapel. However, I show you another person we photographed, same session, same location. This gentleman looks just fine. So as you can see, this lady's jacket was, was reacting strongly with my screen, creating this moray effect. Now let's just take a look at her um, original image. That's here. This is the image slightly zoomed in. You can see that the jacket has a very fine pattern to it, which is creating our interaction with the screen. But here in a larger um, size, it looks just fine. Now I'm going to make it, uh, we're going to fit the, fit the image to the screen. And notice when I um, make it a little smaller, you're going to see the moray effect right along that uh, uh, sleeve again and up onto her lapel. So what do we do to fix that? The solution to our problem is blurring the jacket so it is no longer a fine pattern that reacts with our screen. So to do this, what I'm going to do is uh, first I'm going to duplicate the background layer and we'll do that by using uh, a keyboard shortcut Control J on the PC, Command J on the Mac and then I'm going to rename uh, that layer blur because that's what we're going to do to it. Now in the we're next going to go to the filter menu we're going to come down to blur and we're going to select Gaussian Blur. And almost as soon as we select that, you see that the moray effect has disappeared. We've got the radius set at 2. And if I toggle back and forth between the preview and not preview, you can see what a great effect that's having on there. The, I found that Radius 2.0 works uh, for this pattern, but what you can do is kind of start down at the bottom of this Radius scale, 0.2, and slowly work your way up until 
you see that pattern disappearing. And I found it kind of just disappeared at around 2.0 on this particular image, uh, which at, and at its particular resolution. So I'm going to click OK for that. So we've managed to eliminate the Murray effect, but we've also created a problem in a sense that she is now blurry. And we just really just want to have the jacket appear blurry. So I'm going to use the a mask to um, solve that problem it will, because that allows me to do some non-destructive editing. So let's go to, to create a mask. We're going to go to layer. We're going to go to layer mask and we are going to um, hide everything on that layer. So we're going to hide the blurry layer, if you will. And what we've just done is create a mask that's black. So um, we've hidden everything that's on there. What we want to reveal is just the jacket. So to reveal in a mask, you want to apply a white color. So we're going to make sure that our foreground color is white. So I'm going to come over here and see our foreground color is currently black. So by clicking the switch color uh, icon here, we're going to uh, flip the uh, color to black and white. If your foreground color is not set to black and white, just click the uh, preset here, the little bl uh, black over white uh, icon there, and that will reset your uh, foreground and back background, background color to black and white. Okay, we're good. So what we want to do is make sure that the mask is selected in the layer here, and you can tell that by the, you'll see the framing around the outside of it. There it is not selected, and here it is. So you'll see the little frame around the outside of it. I'm going to select uh, the brush tool. I can come up here and select the brush tool. I'll just use the keyboard shortcut B. And I would like to have a pretty good size brush. So I'll go up here to the um, options palette. I'll pick a brush, say 100. Uh, actually, I'm going to go up to 200. I've got it set at a nice soft setting here, which is fine. Might adjust it so it's just a little bit, uh, not totally soft and then come back over here onto the image. Um, so remember we've got the mask selected and now I'm just going to paint over this jacket to reveal the blurry part of that layer. And so we're just going right over it here. Okay. Now what I would recommend, uh, if you weren't trying to get through a tutorial rather quickly like I am, I would suggest that you select the jacket, use one of the selection tools, select the jacket so it's, uh, you'll be much more accurate around the edges than I'm going to be, and then uh, come in and um, uh, apply the mask as we're doing, or uh, paint the mask as I am here. Now one little tip here to make sure that this jacket um, does appear to be sharp is to go in and sharp, sharpen things that should be sharp like the but, button holes and the button themsel but, buttons themselves. So I'm going to zoom in on that and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my foreground color to black and I'll use this keyboard shortcut X. See it just turned to black. Still got our brush tool selected and um, I'm going to reduce the size of the brush and come in and bring those buttons back nice and sharp by painting over them in the mask with black. So we're now hiding that if you will. Same thing over here with the buttonholes. Probably use a little uh, smaller brush to do this. We're just sharpening those up a little bit. So the viewer identifies with those areas and um, we prefer that those be sharp and it will allow the illusion that this jacket is just more of a solid gray if we keep those areas sharp. Notice along the edge of the jacket here, um, the pattern is showing through, so of uh, the jacket is showing through. So I'm going to just uh, get to my white brush again and just come along here and blur out those areas. Okay, so now we'll go to we'll look at this full screen and notice that we have gotten rid of our Murray pattern. We would of course flatten this image and send it off to our client as an image that's ready to be used uh, on the internet. Um, 
So here's the after, and if I hide this layer, you're going to see the before. Well, that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. My online tutorials are a great way to learn. However, there's a lot of things that I simply don't have time to share with you online. If you want to learn more and enjoy a more hands-on learning experience, check out the classes we offer at Meteorite Workshops. It's a great way to learn. At Meteorite, we support our students long after the class is over, so check it out. Thanks for being here. Have a great day.